All right, guys, I want to thank y'all for tuning back in and welcome y'all to another episode of the Spring Legion Podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Farrier, joining you today from Quanah, Texas, um, with a special guest we have for uh, for today's episode, uh, Mr. Breck Farrier. Uh, Breck is my youngest brother of the three of us. Chase has been on here a good bit, and y'all heard a few episodes from him. Um, and uh, I've had a lot of people ask to uh, to get Breck on here as well. Um, he is 11 years younger than me, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Breck is. You just turned 17. And um, let's see. You've been coming to Texas for a good while, and um, for the most part, Breck is going to be the uh, the tech guy for a lot of our future endeavors. He is much more advanced in that area than Chase or I am. So uh, he has taught us a lot about both the podcast and any type of video that we've been kind of working on, um, as well as the platforms we put them on, YouTube and and all that stuff. And so if y'all enjoy that, um, which we get a good bit of feedback, he's actually the guy to thank more than we are because we probably wouldn't know how to do any of that without him. Um, but uh, but as far as an introduction goes, I think I, I said it in some kind of Instagram post the other day that I was convinced that Brett came out of the delivery room headed for Texas. Um, he has enjoyed hunting Rio since I can remember, probably since when, I don't remember when he first came out here. How old you were, it had to be six or seven. I think I just turned seven. Just turned seven mm-hmm. when he first came out here. Yeah. And so this would be year 10 in a row. Yeah. Um, Killed a lot of Rios out here, mostly, if not solely, on this little little lease we got. Um, out here, it's right under the Red River, um, kind of where Texas, when I describe it, is where it goes up into Oklahoma towards that little panhandle, right at that corner. Um, and it's some some good years, some bad years, some off years, and a little bit of everything in between. I remember we used to come out here, and I think you were way more excited to. Uh, shoot jackrabbits and stuff like that than, than anything, which we haven't seen a few of those in I don't know how many years, but but um we had a interesting trip. This is day three and it's taken several turns for I don't know which direction it wound up winding and going. But um but but just getting here was a was a madness in itself after we got what probably near Vernon, which is not probably half an hour from here. Um, give a little update to the listeners on what we had to go through just to get to this camp right here. Well, uh, whenever we got to Vernon, mm-hmm. you know, we all got notifications on our phone that there was bad weather ahead. And I got like three of them in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right after another. And the last one said tornado warning, <laughs> seek shelter now. And I showed dad and he was like, Oh boy, we got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, while we were getting gas, we, you and Chase actually looked up and said, "Hey, uh, the clouds are spinning." Yeah. And we just said, "You know, what? we can get gas later." And we got up and went, got on the highway, and about ten minutes later, we started seeing black clouds above us. And then we were just looking around, and Dad looked out the window and he said. Hey, there's a tornado right there. <laughs> we got scared. Yeah, we uh we had gotten the notifications that there were, you know, storms in the area, which I, we were mainly worried about the hail. They were saying softball size hail coming through, and and up to this point, it hadn't even rained yet. So um, we're kind of wondering if it's even closed, if this is just a precautionary type deal. Um, but yeah, we stopped at a Walmart, I think Vernon, and we're about to get gas and and go in and buy a few groceries and and all that stuff and. Somebody had texted us and asked where we were that there was a tornado in Vernon, and we told them, "Well, we're looking at the Welcome to Vernon sign right now, and I don't see one, and it didn't really look that bad." But then we started looking up, and the clouds weren't quite, you know, dark, dark yet. But they were one was going one way, and one was going the other way, and it looked like it was about to meet right in front of us. So uh, we didn't really know what to do. So we got back in the truck and just headed back, you know, headed. Continued heading west towards uh, towards Quanah, which wasn't far away, and um, we had 
I don't think we had gotten through. Yeah, we didn't get through the, the rain or the hail or anything like that until, you know, we could tell that there was definitely some kind of weather system out to our left or kind of ahead of us. And and I, Chase and I are riding in my vehicle behind breaking our dad. And um, one of us looked out about the same time, I'm sure y'all did. And well, well, there's a tornado right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how many miles away it was, but it was two of them ripping through the, you know, the open, I wouldn't call it a field, but just the open plain right there. And that was pretty cool. I'd never seen a tornado in real life before. And I'm yeah. twisting around in my chair trying to see it. And I thought it was really cool. Um, of course, Chase was driving. I don't know if he thought it was as cool as I did. <laughs> um, but that was that was pretty wild. And then we went through the hail, which it wound up not being softball size hail, but it was still pretty big hail um, for a good three miles, I'd say. We were in my truck, so that, I was a little nerve wracked there. We uh, we put our sunglasses on and put a, found a structured cap to put on, thinking you know that was gonna help at all. But I was a little nervous there, watching them you know blow into the window, straight line winds. It was like gunshots, felt like coming straight through the window with a little hail. Um, so that was a little sketchy right there to, to start things off. And then um, we had ended up pulling over to Love's gas station. Um, probably between the two towns and um, just to kind of regather and we knew there was more weather fronts coming in behind it um, not that far away and keep in mind we're probably I'd say 15 minutes from the actual camp which um, we'll get into it later but we, the, the place we're staying is just a, a little just common ground of, of campers and stuff like that and we actually usually are always staying this gutted out school bus with, with a couch and a makeshift bed and a cot or two and that's what we've stayed in for the past 10 years and I don't know how well that would have held up in a tornado but I guess our loves would have been a little better so we uh, we pulled over and hung out there for I'd say a good 30 minutes 45 minutes just trying to kind of weather it out and get a little update on what else was behind it what to expect what we're about to be driving into and um, that's when you see the National Weather Service storm chasers vehicles pulling in with all the you know the brackets and stuff coming off the top yeah. like you see in movies on tv and usually i feel like whenever those show up you're not in a good spot so we decided to hang out a little longer and um wound up seeing another guy that was from texas he, he pulled up and got to talking to us for a while real friendly guy um ended up he he works for a company that's out of 10 miles from where we live back in mississippi he was just out here working in texas and um he said he'd seen quite a few tornadoes, you know, just working out here for over the years. And the clouds above us looked a lot like what usually comes before a tornado. So you know, we were expecting tornado number three there shortly. And I don't know if it ever ended up forming next to us, but we got back in the truck and kept heading on towards school bus and um, wound up getting there all right. And, and uh, got through the mud and everything and pulled up and there's turkey tracks around the camp in the mud after the, the latest tornado that just came directly through, I don't know how many miles away from here, but very, very close. And um, so we were standing there trying to kind of, you know, listen around and roost them because the wind had died down a good bit by this time. And um, you remember, I was standing, I think, on the toolbox of the truck. Chase was, Chase might've been on the toolbox of the other truck and you were down in the truck bed or something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden something came through that was, I never experienced something like that in my life. It was one wind blowing? I think we were facing probably north. North. Yeah, we were facing north. There was a cold, cold wind coming in. I'd say a good 18, 20 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it stopped in a really, really, really hot wind. It felt like you were at the beach, started blowing from the back of us, and it got really weird there for a second. The pressures changed. I don't know how many degrees or how you measure it. Um, inches um changed in a snap and it changed back back and forth two or three times and i didn't know what to think <laughs> it, it got a little air there for a second again but luckily the the storms passed without any harm or major damage around here i believe that i know of and um that uh that made for a pretty muddy opening morning or our first night you'd already been out here and knocked a few out um but uh you and dad went to one side of the property, Chase and I went to another side of the property and uh, collectively caught up 
good bit of Jake's. Um, mm -hmm. We, uh, Chase and I went and got on this group we heard from the roost and work with Rio's, you don't, or we don't at least, try to get too close to their roost because the selectivity in their roosting spots are so kind of spaced out and few and far between. You don't really want to, you bump them off of there, it might be eight miles. I feel like if they find another, you know, creek bed or something with some, some taller trees to, to roost in, you'll wind up pushing them completely off the plate. So we didn't want to get too close to them and um, wound up working just fine, had a bunch of hens with them. And um, got them, man. I feel like within 15 steps, and, and I'm shooting, chasing, filming, and calling a good bit. Um, I didn't have my mouth call in. I'd taken it out and then looked up, and my hand was looking at me. And I didn't get to put another one back in. Um, I'd been calling on slate and then a little bit with the mouth call, but decided to change it out. And I last kind of repositioned. And as soon as I knelt down, I could see something, which I well, know that's what it was. I saw something, one of these bunch of holes that we had bumped and they were kind of running around and I thought it was a turkey so I didn't you know, think about putting another call in. Um, and the bird's probably too far at this point. And um, we, uh, neither of us got to sit down. We're both kneeling the entire time and uh, worked them, worked them in to, I'd say a good 15 yards before I could see them just with the you know, mesquites and stuff like that. And, I got to hearing the hens, knew they were hemmed up, got to hearing drumming pretty steadily, and knew those two birds, two gobblers, and I finally got a peek of them, or one of their fans, you can tell it was Jake's fan. I didn't know about the other one until a little later on, but I'm sitting there frozen, you know, got 24 eyeballs looking at me, turkey, and uh, Chase is behind me, he can't see him, and, and he, uh, he, he starts hearing the drumming, and he's getting all nervous and stuff, and he's thinking, man, the gun ain't even pointed at the right direction, you know, what's, what's going on here? And uh, at the time, he thought they were long beards. He had no idea they were Jake's. And then once they finally walked out there, he went up. That's why. So that was a little bit of a bomb. And y'all have one come. How close to y'all, you think? Not even 20 yards. Really? And he came a good ways after a couple calls and pinpointed the exact spot y'all were at and walked straight to it without, you know, further calling or anything, which was pretty wild. Yeah. Um, it was one of the, the few calm mornings here, usually the wind's howling like it was yesterday and a little bit this morning. But it was it was, it was was odd being out here and it being so, so calm. You could hear stuff for miles without the, you know, the blocking, the trees and stuff like that, blocking it too bad, and, which, was, which was cool. And then I feel like midday and, and even uh, afternoon, same same type of scenario calling up a bunch of jakes and yesterday was about the same calling up a bunch of jakes different groups of them too um, and as of now we have not seen a long beard this go around which is is wild and I, I wouldn't say unexpected because if those that hunt around Texas that I have talked to have kind of insinuated the same on their their years of birds come in waves. You either got no birds, you got all jakes, you got all long beards, and it's just a heyday out there. You know, everybody has no problem running it out as, you know, you're about as quickly as legally possible. Um, but these, uh, we've had a couple of years where it was it was exactly like that. 2018, y'all came out here, and it was, I feel like y'all batted a thousand on them. Every hunt y'all set up on was good on long beard. Um, you, dad, and Chase. And um, I stayed back. Um, April 28th of that year was the day that I killed that turkey that the chapter 82 and 1 was written about mm -hmm. um, in Ballad of a Turkey Hunter. The uh, That was the day that the 1 came along, the 83rd hunt. And I don't think I would have traded that for anything, but that was a good good day out here for y'all, all three of y'all killing one in Rio. And, and to my knowledge, that's the only day all four of us have killed one on the same day. So that was pretty special, um, but uh, but you've had quite a few just good years like that, and then we've had a couple where there's, you know, it's hard to hard to buy a gobble out here, and there's not many birds. Period. No hens, no long beards, no jakes. And we've had years where it's, where we would call it three or four jakes, same scenario, except there were 17 jakes at the same at the same time. Um, but just 
So you've been out here one more time this year, right? This is your second visit? Yeah, I've been out here before. Yeah. And you, you got two long beers in. Um, we knew there was some more left after that, but but you can kind of go into this bill on those since we don't have too much to tell them since I came out here and didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time we came out here, it was, you know, just a fresh, fresh brand new slate coming out here. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything. It, it could be on the good years, warm beers everywhere, bad years, didn't hear nothing. Yep. So the first morning me and Dad woke up, we came out here to the campground, I guess. And we just sat here and listened. Because it's not a really big property mm -hmm. to go out that far and listen. Yeah. You can just sit right here and hear one about 800 miles away, no, 800 mm -hmm. yards away. <laughs> 800 miles away, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, anyways, we sat here and started listening and we heard a bunch of putting mm. and wings flapping. We said, they're getting off the roost right now. Yeah. It was like barely breaking dust. And it was right over there by the windmill, about 300 yards from where we are now. And Mr. Bruce said there was a deer blind down there. Mm -hmm. He said there's a bunch of open land down there, like little patches of open spots. And he said, y'all can go down there and see if y'all can try to grab one mm -hmm. by the creek. And he said, just go down there and try it. So I don't know what you're gonna try, yeah. yeah. What you're gonna do, what you're gonna find out. But just try to kill one. Uh, yeah, but typically that's where they're gonna be. He, he's out here pretty good bit. He's out here nearly every weekend, I feel like. He, yeah. lives, he lives pretty close. He calls us back like every mm -hmm. two weeks and says, hey, uh, we heard two gobbles back here and one gobble by the fence. Yeah. And he so said, I've seen two hens cross the road last Wednesday. I'm gonna just give us like updates on that. Mm -hmm. And he didn't give us any updates before we came out here. <laughs> yeah. As I know of. Uh, so anyways, we went back there to the windmill in the morning and there's actually a guy on a trailer. He had a trailer pulling down on the road about 200 yards away from us. It's a little public road going down mm -hmm. to I think another farm. And the trailer was bouncing up and down, making all sorts of noise. And turkeys had just stopped completely. Mm -hmm. And my dad looked through the binoculars and he saw a black dot in the tree. He said, hey, there's one in that tree out there. And I was like, you're crazy. They're already on the ground. He said, no, look back there. I looked, squeezed my head through and there. There's turkey. Like going in strut and out of strut like every two seconds. So you're going back in the tree. Yeah. We flew right back up and then it took them about an hour to get back down. Yeah, that, yeah. that trailer done bumped them back into the roost. Mm -hmm. And after that, we didn't get back to them. They went back kind of scattered out. We came back, ate breakfast, took a nap. And that afternoon, we hadn't heard anything around anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go back to the same spot we went to. And we just sat there, just waiting to see if one just walked by. We sat by two or three trails that they crossed and just waited. Mm -hmm. I called every 15 minutes and just hope one would just walk up. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Just a long satellite guy yep. walked up to it. It was just like my first turkey I killed out here really? when I was seven years old. Yep. One turkey just came up strutting and he just, just finally called at the right time. He was able to hear it. And yeah. They just pinpointed us right there. Yep. And I shot him. Then, uh, first shot didn't go too good. <laughs> I hit him because I saw feathers going everywhere. I thought, all right, let's go get him. Mm -hmm. They jumped up and he got back up and was going around in circles mm -hmm. and stuff. And I said, shoot him again. He's not done. So I shot him again. He went right down. The second one did the trick. Mm -hmm. And the next morning after that, uh, when I said, hey, check your choke. Or what shells are you using or something? Let's see what went along with the first shot. Mm -hmm. uh, 
looked at my gun and I saw my choke had a little silver bar around it. I looked at it and it was loose. Really? And I had to, it came unscrewed whenever we were riding in the buggy. I like hit so many bumps and stuff, yeah. like it's just unscrewed it a little bit and I had to screw it back. And the next one I shot at just took one shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good, that's one of those easy fixes. Mm -hmm. You're not having to do too much extra. Um, like taking apart your gun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> source of you were there for that. Yeah. That year, taking apart my entire gun to a uh, same turkey we were talking about earlier, uh, that 82 and one turkey. Took apart my gun trying to clean it or something and wound up, I don't know what I did, but it wasn't right. Um, I can tell you. Yeah, <laughs> usually you can, you know more about guns and stuff like that than I probably ever will already. Um, but a, a story, I think, I don't know if it was last week's podcast or it was a couple weeks ago. Um, I, had, I, had, I had to actually mention on it, whatever guest we had on was talking about the uh, your first solo hunt back in Mississippi, which was last season, which is a story to listen to. Because um, in, in my mind, it was, it was a big day because it was going to be, it was going to be your first solo hunt. And um, cause I'd heard birds, this had to have been the first week of the regular season was you were able to hunt Mississippi Youth Weekend mm -hmm. last year. That's my last youth, youth season. Yeah, last youth season in Mississippi was last year for you. And you were able to hunt youth season out here in Texas this year, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at 16 mm -hmm. and you just turned 17 now, the other day. But um, the last year I'd heard bird, got on him, um, wound up long story short i think they ended up kind of concluding that somebody was poaching on the neighboring property and he was on our side of the the bird was on our property but we weren't far from that line but apparently they brought in a bunch of, they caught the guy somebody poaching over there and brought in some trucks or four or something and it wound up you know making enough commotion i could hear what i could hear something i just didn't know what it was yeah. There's a ridge between me and the bird, and I guess that bird could hear good. And he kind of came down, and which you know is running, kind of chop trotting down a ridge, which is pretty rare. You know they usually don't do that. Yeah. Um, kind of right at me, and I'm sitting here getting my gun ready. I wasn't really expecting it. Um, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, damn, must be calling pretty good for him to come running down a ridge like that. I had no idea the commotion stuff was going on a, a mile or so away, and um, you know he just kept on running. Um, trucking down the down the ridge and kind of went past me, never stopped. I cut a couple times and he never stopped, and I let that opportunity get right through my fingers and um, just kind of sat there and all like, well, that was odd. Found out there was stuff going on on the other side of a little ways away, and it made a little more sense. But I figured I'd go back after him the next morning, and uh, you were gonna come along with me, and and I thought, you know, shoot, you know, you've had your last use season, might as well. Started solo hunt or so, and I knew there was some birds on the other half of the the other side of the road we we drive in on, and dropped you off. Uh, I'd say about 400 yards from where I was going to be, and and uh, gave you a quick rundown on, you know, walk down this way and stop right here and hoot and see if you hear anything, and kind of let you take it from there. Figured if nothing more in the back of my mind is this is going to be a good learning experience for you. You're going to learn a bunch of stuff. Probably going to mess up a bunch of stuff. And, you know, if you do hear a gobble, I think that'd have been sufficient for a good hunt, hoping that you did hear a gobble, especially if you could call and make one gobble. You know, yeah. in my mind, that's a big deal on the uh, on the first hunt by yourself. So I drop you off a little bit before, probably I say gobble time, and I kind of get got going, and I had made it a little ways, and I was waiting to hear a gobble. I heard mine gobble, and wound up getting down about halfway kind of skirting a ridge and then of course changed my mind said this isn't gonna work and came back around and went down the other side so I burned a little time there and before I could even you know get a find a tree to sit next to I heard you shoot and in the back of my mind I'm thinking you know did he drop his gun did you know did something what's happening is he shot a snake in the middle of you know prime time turkey season I'm thinking yes but I'm glad you did but I'm I'm 
thinking in the back of my mind of everything that could happen for you, a reason for you to actually shoot something. Um, so I just, I didn't even sit down. I turned back around and got to walk and I, I wouldn't have enough service to call you. So I just have to kind of come find you and I kind of top over that little knoll that I dropped you off on and see you just standing there holding a the turkey. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what in the world? <laughs> That's the last thing I expected, I'm not gonna lie, was you to go in there first solo hunt by yourself and kill one before I could find a tree to sit on. Um, but I, I promised somebody, whichever guest that was on here, that I get you on here to tell that story if you wanted to tell that before we wrap things up and hit the road. Okay. Yeah. All right. So after I dropped you off, kind of go through because I've only heard bits and pieces of it as we're kind of standing there. Yeah. But um, we'll start with the day before that. Um, I was sitting there just like watching TV or something, mm -hmm. texting my buddies, and. Dad walked in and he said, hey, Hunter's going to deer camp tomorrow to go turkey camp. You wanna go with him? I was like, sure. He was like, okay, we're gonna do something different. We're gonna let you go by yourself. I was like, okay, now we're, now we're talking something. Yeah. And he said, I don't care what you do. If you see a turkey, shoot it. I don't care if it's a Jake or whatever. Jake or a longbeard, shoot it. And in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I'm not shooting no Jake, yeah. but okay. So you're still of age in Mississippi, I think 16 years and younger. Mm -hmm. and shooting. Yeah. So yeah. you're definitely of age. I was 15 when this happened, yeah. I think. You it were. was two weeks before my birthday. Right. Yep. And I was like, okay, I might shoot the Jake, but we'll go and see what happens. And next morning rolls around. I get dressed early up in the morning. And I'm sitting there just waiting to see him. That's giving me like a rundown of what all's gonna happen. stuff out of your regular silver truck mm -hmm. and I was thinking I was already uh, pulling on the door ready to get in there and go he said hold on now we're taking the old green truck mm -hmm. and that was Paul's truck that he handed down to me right and I was like okay this might be something special or something yeah and I was like oh good luck or something I don't know I ended up taking that and going on the roads and I wasn't sure it was gonna crank. Yeah, it's really old. It is old. It's a little Ford Ranger, 1999 model. Really? Mm-hmm. He spray painted it and all stuff. Oh, yeah. It started getting white. And, but that was kind of a special truck for me. It was my first truck. Yeah. Ever drove. Yeah. And uh, whenever he dropped me off, I was thinking, okay, I've deer hunted here once before, so I barely know a little bit around here. It was pitch black when he dropped me off. I pulled up my flashlight, didn't know if that would help or anything. I was just hoping I would just get in there and just sit down. And I was just walking through the night. I tripped over like two or three branches. <laughs> but uh, when I got into the food plot where the deer stand was, I went about 10 yards down the ridge that it was on the bank, bank of. And, uh, hooted one time and not even 50 yards and gobbled right in the tree scared me to death I hit the ground it, my heart was going a thousand miles an hour it scared me and uh, I scared off to a tree and I got just crawled my hands and knees to a tree about 10 yards away from it and uh, it was really dark I could not see anything yeah. and, uh, He's, he was hammering like twice every minute. Really? Mm -hmm. I tried to pull out my glass slate calling, tried to call to him. That did not work at all. <laughs> it was too humid and yeah, the humidity. wet that water had gotten into the grooves of my call and it couldn't make a sound mm -hmm. at all. That happened to me yesterday. Mm -hmm. and it 
stuff like that. You put your thumb right on it. Yep. Yeah. And so I said, I got to do my mouth call there just to get him, let him know I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here if you want to, you know, just come to me. And I was so nervous, I barely could get a yelp <laughs> out. <laughs> it was just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> He gobbled at that like twice. <laughs> that was surprising to me. I was like, no. <laughs> um, but anyways, I it was just still pitch black and it was barely getting light. And whenever I could start to see around, I looked around and I noticed I'm in the middle of the food plot. Mm. There was nothing covering me. I was sitting right in the tree in the middle. Yep. I think the orange would say that was the one tree I said, do not sit on. Yeah, but, it was. So <laughs> just don't. Sit anywhere but in the middle. I know you're gonna get there and say this is perfect. It's right in the middle. I can see everything. But I'm thinking you're gonna sit there and you're gonna be right in the middle of the food plot. Yeah. But apparently I was wrong. Yeah. I had like slumped down whenever I figured that out. I was trying to get my body level with the ground. Yeah. Just like stick my head up right onto the tree. Make sure. Yeah. And then I ended up crawling to the side of the food plot where a tree was. Mm -hmm. and where he was, there was a road coming up from the ridge, I guess you'd say, yeah. coming up into the food plot. I don't know if it was gonna come up there or hook around me or something like that. It was another small food plot, like right. about 50 yards wide. If I had to guess, that's where he would have gone down to. Mm -hmm. That's where I was thinking it was going to. And since I yelped, yeah. quote unquote. Probably sounded like a real human instead of a turkey call, dude. No, maybe. But well, after I called a good bit, um, I could not see anything. It was still black, pitch black, barely getting light. I started hearing something. I heard the, like a snap. Mm -hmm. He stepped on a twig, and I was thinking, he's right here. Mm -hmm. He's right here on top of me. I wasn't expecting that. I can. I didn't ever see him fly down. I never heard him wings do anything. He just mm -hmm. right on the ground, started walking to me, and I started hearing something. It was just boom, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, what in the world is this? And my ears, my earlobes started like I felt them shaking whenever mm -hmm. it happened. I was thinking, that's what drumming is. <laughs> I never heard drumming before. And that's what dad said it would be. He said, if you feel like a deep voice or something like shaking your earlobes, that's drumming. And I was thinking, he's right on top of me now. You gotta be drumming, yeah. yeah. I ended up hearing spitting and drumming for five minutes. Mm -hmm. He walked up on top of the ridge. I still couldn't see him. Mm -hmm. I saw a black dot. And I saw him just going in circles and still strutting spitting a drum. Whenever he like, stuck his head up, I couldn't tell it because his head was pitch black. Yep. And there was no bit like a bit navy of, blue color. Yeah. There was no bit of blue, red, yeah. anything. It was just, it looked black. I want to say that was one of the, I had seen a turkey like that over there and I, I had the same situation where I was, I'd never seen something like that. It was just like a dark, dark blue navy mm -hmm. head, real small head. Small turkey period, yeah. it felt like. And I couldn't tell it was an animal or what it was, and it was, you know, just looked like a, a banny rooster compared to a. Yeah, whenever he went out of strut, it just looked really skinny and scrawny looking. Mm -hmm. That's the only one time he went out of strut, but. I, I've said, and that's the only one I've ever seen, and it's gotta be the same one, just has yeah. migrated kind of over towards the left side of his place. But he had been over there and. Still just couldn't see him. Mm -hmm. I waited till it got light and he said he was gonna move. And mm -hmm. He got to the edge of the food plot and went on a strut, stuck his head like really high up and he took off. <laughs> he started sprinting full sprint into the other side of the food plot into the other patch of trees. And then he stopped and he started strutting again. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, I just let him go. But yeah. then he got to the other side, started strutting. And I was thinking, okay, I have another shot. Yeah. But he went down, it was a really shallow ridge and he went down there about 30 yards, still strutting, spitting. He gobbled like twice and that shook me. Oh, I bet. 
I was already shaking because I was so nervous, but after that, mm -hmm, and he, mm, that scared me, but <laughs> I just didn't know what to do. Because usually they will call and I would just sit there being ready to shoot. Yeah. He wasn't there, so. It's all on you. Yeah. I had to make a decision. I call right now or just wait till he comes up closer. I put it like one or two times. He gobbled at it. Mm -hmm. He was like real fired up. Mm -hmm. And he came right up to the food plot, but anytime I could get a shot, he went behind this one little pine tree that was about an inch thick. I could not get a shot. That was the only time he ever stopped. He kept walking in circles again. And mm -hmm. then whenever he got, you know, just chill and not so fired up. Yeah. He went to the edge of the food plot, and I was thinking, okay, he's probably gonna start sprinting now. I need to shoot him while I can. He took off, and he went straight into behind some, uh, I guess you say vines, yeah. shrub mm -hmm. type. A bunch of junk. Yeah. Right in front of me. And I said, he, he's about to fly off of the ridge, because he started getting low, and then putting his wings out, and I. I yeah. just got scared. I just went ahead and shot at him. I said, screw it. <laughs> I saw him. He was still running and he went down, like onto the ground. And I was thinking, whoa. whoa. <laughs> he went down. Okay, I got back up. I sprinted out to into the food plot. I saw him. He tried to get back up and he started, you know, he got back up and mm -hmm. I kind of get his feet shot him again because <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Yeah. He was about to take off. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you did. That you was got it. Him in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, I remember hearing that second shot thinking, all right, he's, it kind of confirmed that you hadn't fallen and the gun had gone off, like you're, you're shooting at something. You yeah. Know, so it made me feel a little better not knowing what was going on. Um, but then it, I was kind of like, well, he missed whatever it was, you know. So I really didn't expect to see you holding a, a good turkey too. Yeah. As soon as I got back up there to you, and that was, I mean, that was awesome. That was a special day. Just. Mm -hmm. You know, getting to share the day with you and, and see that pretty firsthand. It's about as firsthand as you can see a solo hunt, I, yeah. I'd say. Um, listening to it at least while I couldn't even find a tree to yeah. sit on me while you're over here waxing. Um, Sitting on the tree. You told me not to sit yeah. on it. Yeah. Doing what I said not to do and it working out. So maybe I need to take a few lessons from you. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, that and, and combined with um, being able to put it in a ball ball old truck and to head back to the house, that was pretty special. And, mm -hmm. and um, since then, there's been a lot of re-echoes in the, uh, over your shoulder, I feel like. Yeah. Last year and this year. And <clears throat> I think there's there's always years that, pretty much wherever you go, is either gonna, the, the, I guess, quote unquote, little phrase is you either got turkeys or you don't, kind of around yeah. here. And, yeah. And back home in Mississippi is. You hear that? Looks like it. No, it looks like it yelled up there. Probably. Um, Probably, yeah. Yep. Right. Isn't that yeah. Creek Bay yet? Yeah. Somebody can wrap it up quick. I thought I see someone up there. I read some of that. It was a little pre bird. No, I saw him. I'm not sure everyone. Oh, um, right. But yeah, so that was that was a pretty special day, and I'm glad that that turkey waited to gobble until now, because we had to wrap it up before we got to it. But um, but gonna y'all gonna head out, head back to Mississippi, and I'm probably gonna hang around Texas and out this direction for a, a day or two at least. And um, plan is my my kind of goal for the rest of the season is is not necessarily you know going and filling a bunch of tags or anything. Is I'm I'm trying to. For the remainder of the season, Mississippi's closes on the upcoming Saturday on May 1st. And I really want to, you know, just hunt with as many people as possible and, and make as many connections as possible uh, for people out there that that are also traveling around doing a little turkey hunting. And um, just want to reach out to me. And, you know, I'd love to entertain the thought of, of coming out and hanging out with a few different people in the industry and people that love turkey hunting in the turkey hunting community and more than willing to, uh, to make a trip or two and, and try to work it out where I can, you know, hit a state or two here and a state or two there and 
that's kind of my my goal. I think I've I've set out for the rest of the season up until shoot the end of May or in June if it, if it carries that way up to Maine or I don't know the Michigan Bay. A couple of seasons stay open later a good bit than others, and I'd like to uh, like to see new sites, hunt new turkeys, and and just make new connections with people. And I'll grab the camera and head on up to anybody that does want to reach out and see if I'm in the area. Feel free to to come say hey or anything of that nature. And that's kind of what what I wanted the the podcast and the social media part to be about was to interact with different people and and meet new like-minded turkey hunters and that's that's going to remain the goal i got nothing but time ahead of me and, and want to utilize it to the most efficiently uh to the to the best of what am i trying to say here the most efficiently manner yes. i guess yeah. um got a little tongue tied but um but i'm going to hang around here and might go try to hunt that turkey while y'all leave and if there's a good one i'll send you a picture but uh but i probably won't be too far behind you headed back east or maybe north i don't know but Brick, i appreciate you being on here i know a lot of people have asked to to get you on here to get your some of your stories and the way you tell stories and the descriptive manner you use a lot, a lot of people like that um so the rio magnet the mullet man um it's been a long time coming to get you on here a lot of a lot of credit goes to you for even having a podcast because you taught me a lot about it yeah. and a lot about the video part and can't thank you enough for that and i think the future is bright for you especially with spring legion um but with that guys we'll wrap it up i gotta throw on some overalls real quick and y'all gotta hit the road and um we appreciate everybody for listening and and, and thank y'all for the likes shares and follows and um and any kind of tips or things of that nature you want to you want to hear a little more about or anything nothing not too much new on the on the website and we did just get a, a complete haul of richardson 112s and bottom lands we got a a good heavy stock of those now so y'all be sure to check those out if you haven't yet a lot of people are starting to send in uh, the first pictures we get of the actual you know turkey pictures and those since they didn't get here till mid to late season for a lot of places so that's been good to see um, so y'all keep sending them in, keep getting after them, and we'll see y'all next week. And appreciate y'all listening to the Spring Legion Podcast.